All right, guys, Dr. Cruz here, Elementary Statistics. We're going to do a video on the area to the left of a Z number and area to the right of a Z number. And here in a few minutes, we'll do area in between two Z numbers. So let's just make up a little story here. The average weight is 18 pounds with a standard deviation of 4.4 pounds. And you guys can make up your own little story. The average weight of a cat, dog, fox, pig, you know, fish, whatever you want to think about. But anyway, we did this uh, observation, this experiment, and we found that the average weight of these things is 18 pounds, give or take 4.4 pounds. And the question is, what's the probability it will weigh less than 20 pounds? So we have a mu of 18, our average, and a standard deviation of 4.4. That's the width of these steps here. All right, so start with your standard normal curve. And put your 0, 1, 2, 3, Z numbers on there like this. Now, right beneath them, it's kind of handy uh, to get a visual of where these numbers lie. Now, if the average is 18, that's going to go right here under 0, right in the middle, all right, where we split the curve into half, 50% to the left and 50% to the right. So right under 0, that's where your average goes. And then as I move to the right, I'm going to add 4.4. So 18 plus 4.4 gives me 22.4, plus another 4.4, plus another 4.4. And I do the same thing moving to the left, except I subtract. So minus 4.4, minus 4.4, minus 4.4. So we have a range here of 4.8 pounds all the way up to 31.2 pounds. 4.8 pounds would be unusually light for whatever this animal is and 31.2 pounds would be unusually heavy for whatever this animal is. And the average is right here in the middle at 18. So my question is, uh, what's the probability that, you know, I basically reach into a hat and I pull out an animal that weighs less than 20 pounds? We'll figure out where 20 pounds is here. Your Z numbers are your 0, 1, 2, 3 numbers. We call those standard scores. And this is your raw score, your X number that came from the story. So figure out where your raw score lands. 20 is going to be in between 18 and 22, so I placed it right about here. All right, and the question is, well, I need to know what that Z number is so that I can grab my Z table and look up that Z score, and the table will tell me area to the left. It'll tell me uh, all the people living to the left of this number. So I draw a line straight up and I shade to the left, and that gives me a good visual of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this number right here. The area to the left of whatever this Z number turns out to be. All right, so I need to change my 20 pounds to a Z number. It's going to be something in between 0 and 1. And then once I find that Z number, I'm going to grab my Z table and look it up, and it will tell me the area to the left. It'll tell me out of 100, you know, if there's 100 people under this curve, it'll tell me how many people live to the left of this number right here. So first things first, we got to change that uh, X number to a Z number. So we do our little conversion here. I want the probability that this thing weighs less than 20 pounds. I want this area over here. So it's the probability that X is less than 20. That's my story problem number. That's my raw score. And I'm going to change it to the probability that Z is less than something. i got to figure out what 20 in X numbers means in Z numbers. I'm going to change 20 to a Z number using this little conversion formula over here. So the X number is going to be whatever X number I happen to be talking about. And I'm talking about 20 pounds here. So it's going to be 20 minus the average 18 divided by the width of a standard deviation 4.4. That's a nice easy calculation. And it winds up, it winds up that my Z number is 0.45. All right. I'm going two decimal places because that's what my Z table uses. When I'm looking up a Z number, it's always, you know, one point something something or two point something something or 0 0.45 in this case. All right, so I'm looking up a Z number of 0.45 right there where that question mark is. That's a 0.45, which makes sense because it's kind of in between 0 and 1. So that makes sense. It's kind of where it needs to be. All right, <clears throat> so the probability that this thing weighs less than 20. The probability that I grab a random, uh, let's call it a dog, 
the probability that I grab a random dog and that dog weighs less than 20 pounds is the same thing as saying the probability that z is less than 0.45. Well, now I just grab my z table. All right, got my z table, and I look at 0.4, and then the next number is up top here, 5. So 0.4 over to 5 looks like there's about a 67.36% chance uh, that I grab an animal that weighs less than 20 pounds. Or you can think that there's about 67 people living to the left of that number. All right, so the probability that Z is less than 0.45 is 0.6736. There's a 67% chance that I can grab a random uh, dog, you know, pull it out of a hat, and that dog weighs less than 20 pounds. Let's go back to our picture here. So that means 0.6736. Three, six. Man, I write like a child. All right, so the probability that I grab an animal that weighs any of these weights here, all the way from 4.8 pounds to 9.2 to 13.6 to 18 to 20, any of those weights in between there, the probability that I reach into a hat and grab a dog or whatever that weighs less than 20 pounds is about 67%. All right, now since we're here, remember the rest of this, the area of the white, uh, that's just the rest of the 100%. So if I just take 1 minus 0.6736, I'll find this area right here. All right, so 1 minus 0.6736 means that the area on the right is about, let's call that 33%, 0.3264. And so now we have, we've, we've answered the question, the probability that I reach in and grab something less than 20 pounds is about 67%. And then we just kind of answered a bonus question over here. This is the area to the right. This is the probability that I reach into a hat and I grab an animal that weighs more than 20 pounds. It just depends on how they ask the question. If they ask uh, less than, you're going to look up area to the left. And if they ask more than or greater than, you look up area to the right. All right. Actually, you don't look up area to the right. You calculate it by subtracting this from 1. Here's a little notation for area to the right. We're going to do that in just a second anyway. So the probability that I reach into the hat and I grab a dog that weighs more than 20 pounds is the same thing as saying the probability that Z is greater than 0.45. Now, unfortunately, I can't look this up in the table. The table only tells me values to the left of 0.45. It only tells me less than. So if I want greater than, I have to find less than in the table and subtract it from 1. So I looked up to the left of 0.45, that was 0.6736, and I subtracted it from 1 to get the area to the right. Okay, let's find area to the right. Now I'm going to use the same mu and the same standard deviation. So uh, your z and x numbers are going to be basically the same here. It'll save you some time on drawing the curve. Uh, let's call this one a tree. The average tree height is 18 feet, give or take 4.4 feet. What's the probability I reach into a hat and select a random tree that is taller than 15 feet? Well, let's figure out where 15 would land on our curve here. 15 is right there. It's kind of between 13.6 and 18. So I made it a little bit closer to 13.6. I drew my line and I shaded to the right because I want taller than, that's greater than, that means to the right. So I'm looking for this area over here. All right, now remember, area to the right is not in your Z table. The Z table only measures area to the left. So once I figure out what this number is in, you know, Z language, once I figure out what the Z number is, I'm going to look it up in the table and it's going to tell me this area over here to the left. I'll have to subtract that from 1 to find my actual answer, the area to the right. All right, so let's go to our conversion. Let's change this X number, our raw score, to a Z number, a 0, 1, 2, 3 number. Looks like it's going to be negative, and looks like it's going to be a little bit less than 1. All right, so just kind of be expecting that. All right, here's your conversion. So the probability that a tree is taller than 15 feet is the same thing as saying the probability that Z is taller than or greater than, and we got to convert that 15 to a Z number. So 
your x number is 15. That's the number we're talking about. 15 minus the average over the standard deviation. Looks like that. And we wind up with negative 0.68. So the probability that a tree is taller than 15 feet is the same thing as saying the probability that c is greater than negative 0.68. All right, so I marked it up here. 15 translates to a negative 0.68 when we're speaking z. All right, let's go back to uh, our math. So I know that the probability a tree is taller than 15 feet is the same thing as the probability that z is more than negative 0.68. Now remember, I can't look up more than in the table. I have to look up less than in the table and then subtract that from one. So I look this up in the table, I look up negative 0.68, and I get 0.2483. There's negative 0.6, and then all the way over to 8 is 0.2483. So let's go ahead and mark that up here. All right, so I looked up area to the left, and it's 0.2483. What I want is area to the right, so I need to subtract this from 1 to find the area to the right. And that's what we're doing right down here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take the 2.2483 away from 1 to get 0.7517 area to the right. There's a 75% chance that I'll reach into a hat and select a tree that is taller than 15 feet. And there's what my drawing looks like now. All right. So figure out what number they're talking about, 15 in this case. Change it to a Z, negative 0.68. Look that Z up in the table. That's going to tell you area to the left, 0.2483. Subtract that from 1 to get the actual area to the right, which is what we were looking for, 0.7517. All right, now this one's kind of tricky. This is going to be area between two unknown Z numbers. So whatever this is and whatever this is, I want the area between. All right, so I've shaded it here, and I've basically I've broken the curve up into three pieces. I got the piece in the middle, the piece on the left, and there's a little piece over here on the right as well. I want the area in the middle. I want the area between these two z numbers. So I use the same mu and the same standard deviation. So same basic numbers underneath your curve here, and let's call this a quiz score. So you know I had a hundred students walk in and I gave them a quiz. And the average score on this quiz was 18, give or take 4.4, the standard deviation 4.4. What's the probability I reach into a hat, you know, I have 100 names in the hat, and I randomly select someone who scored between 13 and 27 points on this quiz. So here's my Z numbers, negative 3 all the way up to positive 3. So your 0, 1, 2, 3 numbers are your Z numbers. My raw score on my quizzes runs from an unusually low quiz score of 4.8 all the way up to an unusually high score of 31.2 points. Now I'm specifically talking about 13. So 13 is in between 9.2 and 13.6, right about there. Draw a line up. And I'm talking about 27. So 27 is in between 26.8 and 31.2. It's pretty close to 26.8. Draw a line straight up, shade in between. This is what I'm looking for the area between 13 and 27. All right, that's if I'm speaking points on a quiz. Now I need to convert those to Z numbers. So this is two conversions. I got to convert 13 and I got to convert 27. Let's start with that. Let's get 13 changed to a Z number and let's get 27 changed to a Z number. And then we'll work on the math about you know, the, the area in between. All right. So here's how we write probability in between. The probability somebody scored between 13 and 27 points. Well, here's how we write it in statistics. We say the probability that the raw score was between 13 and 27 points. The probability that I reach into a hat and I pull out a student who scored between 13 and 27 points. Well, that's the same thing as saying the probability that Z is between and now I need to convert 13 to a 0, 1, 2, 3 number, and I need to convert 27 to a 0, 1, 2, 3 number. So that's two conversions. I just come off to the side here and I do my conversions. So 13 converts to negative 1.14, 1 
27 converts to 2.05. All right, so let's rewrite this thing now. The probability that a random student selected out of a hat scored between 13 and 27 points is the same thing as saying the probability that z is between negative 1.14 and 2.05. Let's go ahead and put those on our picture and we'll come back. All right, so I kind of squeezed those in. A score of 13 is a z number of negative 1.14. See, it's a little bit to the left of negative 1. Okay, that looks like we're in the right spot. And 2.05 would be the z equivalent of a score of 27 points. And that's a little bit to the right of 2. That's about where it needs to be. So instead of looking for you know, the, the probability that somebody scored between 13 and 27 points, I'm going to change it to z and look for the probability that somebody scored between negative 1.14 and 2.05. OK, now there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way that that most people do it, all right? Most people come over here to the number on the right, the 2.05, and they look that up in the table. Now think about what that's gonna tell them. That's gonna tell them how many people live to the left of this line right here. Remember there's a 100% under the curve? Just think of it as 100 people living under the curve. Well, how many people live to the left of this number, this 2.05? How many people live to the left of that number? Let's start there. Let's look up 2.05. All right, so I got my Z table. There's 2.0, and the last number's up here, 5. So 2.05 to the left of that number is 0.9798. That's 97.98%. Let's call that about 98 people, all right? So just think of that as about 98 people live to the left of 2.05. So back to our picture, from 2.05 all the way to the left, that's where 98 out of the 100 people live. All right, remember there's 100 people under the curve, and to the left of 2.05, that's 98 of them. That just means there's about two people over here in this little piece right here. We're not going to worry about this piece for now. So there's 98 people to the left, all right? But what I want is the people living in here. I want the people living from 2.05 to negative 1.14. So I don't want all 98 people, all right? I want 98 people, take away the people living in the white area, all right? I don't want these guys here. I don't want these guys included. So I'm on my way. I've looked up 2.05. I've found out that there's about 98% to the left, but I don't want these guys. I need to subtract out the guys in the white area. All right, so here's where we're at so far. I want the probability that somebody lives left of 2.05. That's the 0.9798 we were just dealing with. So there's about 98% of the curve to the left of 2.05. But I don't want all 98 people. I want to subtract out the people in the white area. So how do I find the people in the white area? I go back to my Z table and I look up negative 1.14. That's going to tell me how many people live here in the white area. So look up negative 1.14. So here's negative 1.1 and then over to 4. 0 0.1271. That's 12.71%. Let's call that, you know, about 13 people live to the left of negative 1.14. All right, so we just looked up negative 1.14, and we found out that to the left of there is 12.71% of the curve. That's about 13%. That's about 13 people. So let's start over. I look up 2.05 in the table, and I say, okay, how many people live to the left of here? Well, that was about 98 people, 98% of the curve. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want these guys. I need to subtract out those 13 people. So it's going to be roughly 98 take away 13 will leave me the area in between. All right, so let's use more precise numbers now and do that. All right, I look up at the 205 on the right. That tells me there's about 98 people to the left of this number. But I don't want these guys in the white area. So I look up the guys in the white area, that's 0.1271, and I subtract them from the 98 people. 
which leaves me about 85 people in the middle, 0.8527. That's about 85.27%, all right? So I wind up with about an 85% chance that I'll reach into a hat with 100 names of students who took that quiz, and I'll randomly pull out a student who scored between 13 and 27 points. All right, so back to my picture. All right, I looked up 2.05, that was too many people. I subtracted out 0.1271, which left me with 0.8527. Now all that's left on this curve, even though this isn't part of the problem, all that's left on this curve is that little bitty area to the right. Well, that's the remainder of the 100%. So I got some people here, I got some people here, and whatever is left over is the people living over here to the right. So if I take 100% minus this minus this, I'll be left with what's left over there on the right. All right, now we're speaking decimal, so let's call 100% 1. And let's just go 1 minus 0.8527 minus 1.1271 and see what it gets us. All right, so 1 minus the people in the middle minus the people on the left leaves us with 0 0.0202 people on the right. All right, or another way to do it is 1 minus the 9798 would get you to the same place. All right, so a nice completed curve. All right, we've answered the question. Probability of uh, grabbing a, a student who scored between 13 and 27 points. Well, you look up 2.05. That tells you there was about 98 people. I don't want the people living over here, so I subtracted out those 13, which left me about 85 people in the middle. And then how many people are left over here on the right? Well, I subtract these guys from one, and there's about two people living on the right. But the actual answer we were looking for was 0.8527. All right, let's switch gears here, and uh, let's find a Z such that 8.85% of the curve lies to the left of Z. All right, that sounds confusing until you actually draw a picture. We want a Z number. See, we don't know Z this time. We're kind of working backwards. I don't know what the Z is, but I know that 8.85% of the curve, that's the area, lies to the left of this unknown Z. So 8.85%, if you mark off the percent sign and move the decimal two to the left, that's 0 0.0885, all right? So this is what I know. I know that there's about 8.85% of the curve to the left of whatever this Z is, all right? So that's kind of backwards. I, I know the area, but I don't know the Z, but we can figure this out in the table. All I got to do is just look at all of the Z numbers in the table and figure out which Z produced this area, 0 0.0885. It's kind of like playing hide and seek in the table. All right, so we got this table. <clears throat> now notice I'm on the, the negative Z side, because remember in the picture we were left of zero. And if you're left of zero, you're calculating areas to the left, those are negative Z's. The positive Z's are over here to the right. Remember, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 is over here, and 1, 2, 3 is to the right. So we're on the negative side, all right? And I just kind of look through. This is just hide and seek. I need to go find 0 0.0885, all right? And we just keep looking and keep looking and keep looking until, bingo, we find it right there. Well, what was the Z number that gave us this area? That was negative 1.35. All right. So I looked in the Z table and I found out which Z number produced an area of 0 0.0885. The Z number of negative 1.35 says that 8.85% of the curve is to the left. Or if we call that about 9%, there's about nine people living to the left over here, which means there's 91 people to the right. All right here's one for you to try real quick if you want to pause the video and look it up. Find a Z such that 67% of the curve lies to the left of Z. All right, you can pause here if you got it. All right, and if you didn't pause, you were looking up um, point six. Seven zero zero. You're trying to figure out which Z number produced an area to the left of 0 0.6700. Zero zero. Right, kind of think about where you are. 67%. Remember zero here in the middle. 
that splits it into 50% to the left and 50% to the right. Well, 67% is definitely more than 50%, so I'm over here somewhere on the right. So I'm, I'm on the positive side now. So we grab our z-table on the positive side, and I just look around and look around and look around, and I try to find 0 0.6700, and there it is right there. What z produced that? 0.44. All right, so final answer, what was the z? such that 67% of the curve lies to the left. Okay, they're talking about what Z produced an area to the left of 0.67. Look this up in the table, figure out what Z produced it. Okay, let's go to area to the right now. All right, so area to the right. Find a Z such that 19.77% of the curve lies to the right of this unknown Z number. So this time we have about 20% of the curve to the right, all right? So kind of draw a sketch about where that would be. Remember that in the middle is 50%? So from here to the right is 50%, and you only want about 20%, so it's over here somewhere, all right? Doesn't have to be exact, just draw you a sketch to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm looking for the Z that has an area to the right of 0.1977. Now, I cannot look this up in the table. The table only shows you areas to the left. The table is only going to show me this white area. All right? So we got to do a little bit of math here. I can't look to the right. The table doesn't look to the right. The table only looks to the left. All right? So i got to find the area to the left. Let's do 1 minus this, and that will tell me area to the left, and that's what I'll look for in the table. So 1 minus 0.1977 is 0.8023. Okay, so now that I know there's 80% of the table to the left, or 80 people living over here, that's what I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up for the I'm going to look up the Z that produces 0.8023. I go to my table, I look for 0.8023. The Z number that produced that is 0.85. So I know now that this Z number that produced an area to the left of 0 0.8023 is the same Z number that produces an area to the right of 0.1977. I just can't look this up on the table. i got to subtract it from 1, find this number, and look up the Z in the table that produces this number. All right? So a Z of 0.85 is the area to the left of 0 0.8023, and it's also the area to the right of 0.1977. All right, here's one for you to try. Just pause the video and work on this, and I'll put the answer here in a second. Okay, I'm looking for 64.8% of the curve to the right. I want the Z number that produces this. I can't look this up in the table because the table doesn't look to the right. The table only looks to the left. So i got to figure out what this number is. Subtract that from 1 to get 0 0.3520, this is what I'm looking for in the table. I want the Z number that says to the left is 0.3520. All right, I'm looking all over for 0 0.3520. There it is right there. So it's negative 0.3, and then we go all the way up to 8, negative 0.38. All right, so to find the area to the right, you got to instead look up the area to the left. Find out what Z produced the area to the left, and you have your answer for the right as well. So the Z number of negative 0.38 says there is 35.2% of the curve to the left and 64.8% of the curve to the right. All right, let's do the tricky one, a couple tricky ones here, and we'll call it a day. Find a Z. Now be careful, this is what they're asking for. They're asking for the Z. We'll come back to that. Find a Z such that 39% uh, of the curve lies between Z and its opposite, negative Z. So 39% of the curve is in the middle, all right, between a Z number, this is zero, so that your positive Z is over here somewhere, and your negative Z is over here somewhere. Now remember, these are the same number. It's just this one's negative and this one's positive. 
So, I mean, it could be 0.5 and negative 0.5, or it could be 1 and negative 1. The point is, they're the same number, they're just opposites. We're right smack dab in the middle. So that means however far to the left we went, we went the same distance to the right. All right, use your clues now. If there's 39% of the curve in the middle, that means the rest of it is on the left and right side. And since we're right smack dab in the middle, that means the left and right side will be the same area. So how much do we have left over if we take this 39% out? Well, 1, take away 0.39, leaves 61. 0.61, all right? Let's, let's talk people again. If there's 100 people under the curve and 39 people live here, that means there's still 61 people left over. And since these halves are equal, uh, they're not halves, that's not a good word. Since these two pieces are equal, I know that half of the 61 people live here and half of the 61 people live here. So let's figure out what half is. Just divide by 2. 61% divided by 2 is 30.5%. So 0 0.3050 live here and 0 0.3050 live here. All right, so here's our picture. 39 people live here. 30 and a half people live here, 30 and a half people live here for a total of 100 people, all right? 39%, 30.5%, 30.5%, that adds up to 100%. And if you're speaking decimal, 0 0.3900 plus 0 0.3050 plus another 0 0.3050 adds up to 1. All right, we got our picture. Now, what do I look up in the table? <clears throat> Remember, the table only looks to the left. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to look up this number here. Find what z, it's going to be a negative z, figure out what z has an area to the left of 0 0.3050. Let's just ignore these other two numbers. So I'm going to look up what negative z produced 0 0.3050 to the left. All right, looking for 0 0.3050. That's negative 0 0.5. And then if we scroll to the top, 1. So negative 0.51. All right, so you feel like you've answered the question. You said, okay, the negative z that produced this area was negative 0.51. But be careful here. Lots of people put this answer down and I have to mark it wrong. They said find z. They don't give a crap about negative z, all right? They want z. This is your answer over here. Well, that's just the positive version. So point. 5, 1 is our actual answer. This is what they were asking for. They didn't ask for negative z, they asked for positive z. So be careful about that. You're going to find the answer by looking up the negative z, but the positive is what they actually want. Here's one for you guys to practice. Uh, just go ahead and pause the video, and I'll come back in a second and finish this off. So hopefully you paused the video, tried to work this out yourself. Move the decimal 2 to the left and mark off the percent sign. That's 0 0.6680 in the middle. The rest of it is on the ends. All right, so take this away from 1 and then divide that by 2. Gives you 0 0.1660 here and 0 0.1660 here. This is the one we care about. This is the one we're going to look up. So we're going to try and figure out what negative Z number tells us that it has an area to the left of 0 0.1660, and that's negative 0.97, which is not the answer, all right? They said find the z, so they want this guy over here. z equals positive 